When it comes to studying cinematography, it just makes the most sense to me to study the best in the industry, AKA Roger Deakins. So we're gonna talk through Sicario together and we're gonna pull concepts from it that anyone can learn from, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned veteran. So let's get into it. So the first concept I wanna get into centers around the composition in this movie. And honestly, there's a ton of different notes we can take from the composition in this movie. For one, how to make a shot of four people actually look compelling. Or another one is are the amazing contextual inserts that are in this movie that are just done so well, or even the brilliant use of negative space. But what I really wanna focus on are the highly effective video portraits in this movie. Now, when I say portraits, you're probably thinking about the worst senior photos you've ever seen. But when it comes to the portraits in Sicario, they're nothing alike. You see, these are highly effective one shots of characters and every video portrait, if you will, in this movie conveys an intense amount of emotion and really gives us an inside look into whatever the character is feeling in that moment. Obviously, Roger Deakins uses this technique really well. Sometimes you don't even have to see the character's face to understand what they're actually feeling. Like in these shots when the FBI raids the house and obviously what they find is just horrible, but we can tell what the characters are feeling just from these shots from behind them. And yes, there are different contextual shots within that. So the entirety of the scene really drives on that feeling. But I think it's a really unique approach to get these shots of the back of the characters as they're walking out of the house, trying to turn their backs to the horror that they've actually just seen. But as our story arc continues throughout the movie of Sicario, these portraits continue to communicate more and more and more emotion and they just play a bigger role. But what I really like is how we keep coming back to these portraits of Kate, who's our main character. And the deeper and deeper she goes into this like beast of a machine that she's playing a part in, the portraits and the one shots that keep going back to her show how she's feeling. And the way that she's feeling is kind of how you start to feel as a viewer. It's like the more unsettled that she feels about the situation, the more unsettled you feel about the situation. On that note, as the movie is wrapping up and we see Kate in her apartment, it's really clear that the way that she's feeling is the way that we all feel. She's been chewed up and spit out from this absolutely brutal situation and she's being confronted and sworn to secrecy. Now, I hope I'm not spoiling anything here, but it's just clear at the end of the movie she's destroyed and honestly so are we as the viewer i think when it comes to these portraits it's a really brilliant storytelling tool i mean i think any filmmaker or cinematographer could use this storytelling tool of video portraits to drive home more emotion in your next video and give the viewers of your film a deeper understanding of what your characters are feeling now the next concept that i want to go over is more of a lighting approach and it's the element of a silhouette now this movie has plenty of brilliant silhouettes but the best of which is this kind of famous frame at dusk. I think this frame in particular is a perfect example of not doing too much, right? They could have easily brought in additional lights and a bunch of different things, but that's how it would really look in real life. So they just left it as is and filmed at dusk and the soldiers fall into the shadows and you get to see the beautiful skyline. It's just a beautiful frame. And you can even look through the rest of the movie and find a bunch of pretty solid silhouettes that enhance the visual storytelling. But what I really want you to take away from this shot in particular is just how simple it is and how as a filmmaker or a cinematographer, you don't always have to overcomplicate everything. Sometimes just shooting what's naturally there is the right move. And I think it was the right move in this situation. And our final concept I wanna go over is the element of reflections. And this is something that Roger Deakins is pretty famous for. You can find it in most of his movies, but in this one, it plays a particularly important role in the storytelling. You can see him using it to just add more context to a shot so you can see almost two points of view, but he even just uses it to add just some more visual interest to a shot of a character looking out a window. However, my favorite use of reflections in this movie is this shot of this bracelet on the keychain. Now, contextually, this is a bracelet that Kate knows really well because it links whoever has it to the cartel. So when she sees this bracelet, you can see her blurry in the background, but then focus pulls into the reflection of the coffee table to see her reaction. And a huge fight starts between them. And I'm not gonna get into it, but it's a great piece of context when it comes to storytelling. And I think it's a really great use of reflections. Honestly, there's plenty of different ways you can use reflections. The way that you see here isn't the best one. So I'd look to Roger Deakins to figure out how to use them best. But I think it's really cool how he uses reflections to just show the landscape around the 
characters. Like instead of shooting the landscape itself, he just turned the camera in and pointed it towards a car window. And that's how he shows it in the reflection of the car window. I think that's sick. Or this almost top down shot where we see Kate in one side of the frame and then her reflection in the other side of the frame. It's just a really cool shot and it works so well here. As filmmakers and cinematographers, I think it's important to study the top films in our industry and the people that made them. So hopefully after you've watched this video, you've learned three solid concepts from the man himself, Roger Deakins. But I would encourage you to not stop there. I think you should go out and use these techniques in a shoot. Maybe even plan a whole shoot around just one of these concepts. Because if you don't do anything with the knowledge that you learn, then what's it really worth anyways? I mean, there's no better way to learn than by doing. Honestly, I would rather you watch one of my videos and go apply it than watch 10 of my videos and not apply any of them. But anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. And until next time, let's get out there and make better films.